Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today I'm talking about Gimmick, that's G apostrophe M I C or Grace Magic for Image Computing, this fourth called Gimmick by me. And this one I first mentioned, I never actually knew about it until the Crypto 5 video and then there's a very persistent someone who has wanted me to cover it since then and here we go. So what this one is all about is basically image manipulation. In the simplest form, Gimmick is a command host for running image manipulation scripts. That kind of undersells what it's all about. But what it allows you to do is do um, filters on your images. And this can plug into almost every popular uh, image manipulation program out there. It, I think it was heavily tied to, uh, to GIMP to start things off. But now you can run it in Photoshop. You can run it. It's built directly into Krita as of Krita 5. Uh, also, it's available as a command line tool. So if you've got a number of images you want to batch, it works a lot like Image Magic does. Uh, we'll get back to that one in a minute. Um, but this is more about image manipulation than, you know, image magic you would do for a lot of things like resizing images, cropping images, and so on. This one is for manipulating images. And we're going to see some of those in action. As I mentioned, it's available as a plugin for pretty much every graphics program you want to see. We'll see it in a couple today. It is also available as a library, a very small portable thread safe uh, library. Um, that is entirely C based. So it's very, oh sorry, C based. Very simple to learn and pick up. You can also run it online if you want to check it out. And there is a QT based version for doing this real time with videos. So if you're streaming from a video camera or your video files you want to work with, there's also Z art out there based off the same algorithm. So here we see. Nicholas Cage is going to help us with our demonstrations today, and we are at the online version. Speaking of online, I kind of missed over this. Uh, if you do want to check out Gimmick, it is available at gmic.eu. Uh, it is completely free and completely open source, and there is an online version available. And you can see, I uploaded a file, uh, this classic photo of Nicholas Cage, and then you basically apply filters to it, and you're going to get an idea of the number of filters available, because there are a ton of them. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply an artistic filter to it. Uh, you can see a preview of how that filter would actually look so let's go ahead and we'll do a painting of poor Nick here and then it will process there you'll see the end results you've got sliders that you can control how things work we'll look at this a little bit more in detail when we move out of the web interface but all of the filters that are available for this are available online for you to trial and check out so if you want to do that uh, they're available I'll drop that link somewhere for you so if you want to check that out you can uh, also as I mentioned earlier on this is entirely open source it's under a open source license I don't know that well it is an official OSI license I believe uh, but it's under the Cecil or the Cecil C software license. So if you're going to fork this code and use it for something, do be sure to check out the license in some detail. Another thing you will notice is there have been 70 releases of them, including as much as six days ago. So this is a very updated project on the whole. So uh, this is Gray's Magic for Image Computing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, all of the um, filters that you're seeing are actually scripts. So here you can see a very simple example of a script in action. Uh, and it allows you to do image manipulation. If you want to learn how the scripting actually works, there are some documented examples of creating your own scripts. Uh, so if you want to go through that process, I will link this as well in the linked article down below. So it's kind of this host for scripts that can be used as filters in your graphic applications. The other one I would recommend checking out is Image Magic. I covered this on the channel ages ago. If you need to like convert files, uh, especially from the command line, you need to crop a whole bunch of images. You just need to do a bunch of manipulation, especially in a batch format. Image Magic is your tool. And since um, Gimmick can actually run as a command line, you can sort of chain the two together and do some pretty impressive things. But we are going to be dealing entirely with a user interface at this point in time. So here we are in Krita. Nick is already loaded. This is Krita 5, by the way. If you're using an earlier version, you're going to have to... Um, uh, What's the word? Uh, install it. Uh, in this case, it's actually integrated. So if you want to check it out, just go basically go into filters. And you're going to notice there's start gimmick QT. We go ahead and run that and it loads this host up. So now at this point in time, you can pass in your input. So here we've got layer coming in as none. We can do it as selective or we can just do all layers being passed in, which is what we'll do right here. And... Where's my output? All right, so we'll pick a different filter, and there you can see the result in action. So we've got a ton of different filters in here. There's something like, oh, there's 405 available. Uh, so you got things like from arraying something. So here you can see you can create uh, array images, manipulations. You can even convert into ASCII art, which is really kind of cool. So the sky's the limit when it comes to these actual uh, filters there. You can notice there are a number of different sliders available for each particular filter. You can even change the character set. Uh, if you want to have it just create a character 
out of playing cards, if you so wish, you get an idea of the capabilities of a gimmick right away. There are a ton of these in here. Um, so those are all the array things. Let's go here. We'll take a look at some of the artistic filters. Those are the ones that kind of uh, potentially look the best. Uh, so here we could go. Let's do uh, Brushify. Here we are basically going to start painting our uh, Nick Cage here. You can see he's done out of paint strokes and so on. You have a number of options over here for how to handle it. So if you want more fuzziness, you can add it in and you will get your update over Okay, I guess that's a pretty mild one. And then let's say you do a felt paint again. Okay, you're going to find some of them crash. It's just the nature of the beast. I think cartoon crashes too, or it doesn't like the black background. So we're going to say, okay, we're good with this, uh, the brushify. We'll let it do its thing. I think you say output mode in place, apply. And now it's, it's doing its thing and it's applying it back to our original. So... I can shut down it now, and there you see the update has applied. Now, I mentioned earlier on, this actually can work in a number of different tools. Now, the nice thing is with the Krita 5, which I think is out now out of beta, but I'm not 100% certain, uh, but Krita 5, at the very least, Krita 5 beta has gimmick built directly into it. So if you want to go ahead and check this out, and you've already got Krita 5 installed, literally just head on down to there. Um, but if you're using another application, such as Photoshop, or in my case, Affinity Photo, here you can see Nick is already loaded in. I installed this as a plugin. So now you're going to find filters, plugins, gimmick, gimmick QT, exact same thing. It basically loads up that QT interface, uh, very similar setup here. Uh, and now you can do the same thing. So you've got a number of different options available. Uh, there we just turned <laughs> we just turned him into a voxel uh, pattern. I don't know why it's so rotated. Let's see if we can get rid of that tilt. Get rid of some of that angle. Oh, actually, I want the tilt back. I just don't think I want the angle. I think. No, it's turning it. Okay, I don't really get what's going on here. Let's tilt him more. Okay, right, no, I definitely want to tilt it less. All right, there we go. So we just created the voxel Nick cage. We apply that, and in a second, it will update in our host application. Now, this is actually implemented as a Photoshop plugin. Uh, so you can implement this in... Um, Oh, it does it as a separate. It's okay. So in this case, it's have to save it as an image. That's a little annoying, but oh well. In this case, it is implemented as a Photoshop plugin. You basically, just have to add that in, uh, like so. Basically, just put it in a directory, extract out the archive. That'll work with Paint.net, uh, Photoshop. Uh, as you can see, Affinity Photo, uh, and a number of other programs that um, support that particular interface. So that is kind of it in a nutshell. It, it basically opens up a giant world of filters to your 2D application. Or if you are more of a masochist type or you're trying to do it to a number of different files, all of this stuff here, you can actually run uh, from the command line. Uh, there's good documentation available. So if you want to go through and see everything there is to know about it, it is all incredibly well documented. At the same time, there is scripting um, documentation out there. So if you want to write your own uh filters in it. That's kind of the entire idea behind it. It hosts its own custom scripting language for doing these filters. And yeah, that, that in a nutshell is gimmick. Again, it's not really directly related to game development, but if you're doing artistic work, and more filters is always a nice thing. Uh, again, this one really um, was predominant in the world of GIMP to start, but now again, it's open, it's implemented in Krita and through that QT interface in just about, you know, whatever tool you want to use. So if you want to extend your Affinity Photo or your Photoshop or PaintShop Pro or Paint.net, you can do so uh, with this guy as well. Just do be aware, it is separate downloads depending on what you're trying to do. So GIMP has its own plugin. Um, Krita earlier versions, so 4.x and down, uh, so 3.2 to 4.x, uh, there is a plugin available there. Whereas if it comes down to um, the new version, the beta includes gimmick out of the box. And then over here, you can see Photoshop, Affinity Photo, FaintShop Pro, Protoline, and XU. Oh, and I guess Paint.net is a separate plugin. My apologies there, but there is one out there. There's also a Python uh, version out there and uh, various other options for Windows. You can, of course, use it as a library and you can go and grab the source code if you so wish. And it is updated pretty consistently. So that there is Gimmick. And there, sir, I have covered it. You can stop requesting it. And let me know what you think of Gimmick in general. Also, again, if you haven't already, do check out Image Magic. It's one of those tools that uh, I don't use it very often, but 
when I do use it, it saves my butt. So let's say, for example, I have a sprite sheet. I need to tile it down to the individual sprites. There's no tool out there that works better than ImageMagic on a huge volume of um, files. You can go through a directory structure uh, recursively and so on. ImageMagic is your friend in that regard, and it can also do some of the same stuff. But when it comes to doing actual filters, you're going to probably like um, Gimmick better, but Gimmick is not about things like resizing photos or manipulating photos or cropping photos and that kind of stuff. For that, you want Image Magic, but those two combined together are very, very powerful tool set. So let me know what you think of um, Gimmick today, and do you have another recommendation along these lines? Well, that's about it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.